Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and I'd like to get into today what I call the C1 flipper or flutter syndrome. I've been working on this with Dr. Katz for quite some time now, trying to figure it out. So basically, this is a DMX from this week. There's some abnormal motion of C1 here. If we slow it down, the arrow is pointing to the back of C1, and you can see the back of C1 go up and down as the patient's head goes up and down. And that's not normally what happens. Normally, there's independent movement there between the skull and C1. So this is a more normal DMX run, and you can see on this one uh, something different happening. And if we can compare them, on the right, you're seeing that the back of C1 moves smoothly and independently of the skull, whereas on the left, they're linked. Um, now, the only way that I can think that that's happening is that you have to have a loose transverse ligament for that to work because that ligament is binding C1 to C2. So here, if we model it, you can see a loose transverse ligament would allow this kind of motion to occur. If that transverse ligament were properly tight, you couldn't get this kind of motion at all. Now, the other thing that's probably happening is the rectus capitis posterior minor attaches to the back of C1 and it would control that C1 angle. So there's probably another issue of a weak uh, rectus capitis posterior minor allowing this motion as well. So it's probably transverse ligament plus rectus capitis posterior minor. Now, the treatment for that, therefore, is to inject the transverse ligament, that's the PICL, plus that rectus capitis posterior minor. So I think we've figured it out. Um, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Hey, get this content out to more patients, like, share, subscribe, comment.